3% men and 3% women, according to YouTube analytics. Uh, welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogajan, aka the Seattle Data Guy. Today, I wanted to focus why it is so difficult for people to break into the data engineering field. Recently, I was asked about what interviews are like for junior data engineers. And I kind of started to think about this and realized that most of the time, a lot of people that are interviewing for data engineering positions or companies that are looking for data engineers are often looking for people with a decent amount of experience and a wide variety in terms of skill sets as well as experiences that people have that make it very difficult for people that are in a more junior position to really fill in these roles. And so today I wanted to focus on a few of these reasons why it is so difficult for people to get data engineering positions with very little experience, as well as focus on a few ways that you can break into data engineering if you're looking to try to get into that role and how you can kind of push into data engineering, often moving laterally or by becoming maybe a software engineer first or something that is a little more well-defined before trying to break into data engineering directly. So first let's focus on why it's so hard, I think, to break into data engineering in general, which starts out with college courses in the sense that there isn't a lot in terms of college courses that are focused on data engineering topics, such as ETLs, data warehousing, a lot of the BI concepts that we go over, as well as things like streaming versus batch ETLs and kind of why we do all of the things that we do. And a lot of this, again, isn't really covered in your classic college courses that focus more either on classic software engineering concepts, or maybe as is been recently have been very focused on things like data science because that has been the more popular of the topics. Oftentimes, I really only see data engineering concepts being focused on in later kind of courses in either grad level courses or some sort of certificate program that you have to take later on after you've already exited college. And I think this kind of just starts out most people in the wrong direction because maybe they don't even realize that data engineering exists as a degree, or maybe they don't realize that data engineering exists as a career choice until maybe a few years in to working either as a software engineer or as an analyst. And so there's a lot of gaps that people might have in terms of the tools that they should know, as well as the skill sets that they should have in general. I think there are some similar problems that you'll see often with things like front-end engineering, where oftentimes a lot of the concepts you're taught in school, whether it be software engineering or database design, are often focused on more back-end concepts that are for building applications and not necessarily focused on building things like front-ends using React or things that are a little more modern. And in the same way, a lot of the tools that data engineers use Yes, you need some programming experience, but there's also a lot of focus on, again, skill sets like data warehousing, ETLs that you just aren't exposed to until you've worked in the industry for a long time. Uh, the example I usually like to give people is that I was staring at a data warehouse probably for the first three, six months of my internship. And personally, I didn't really realize it was a different concept to the databases that I'd been working with and designing in school. So it wasn't even clear that I was working on a very different paradigm in terms of how the data was being modeled or being utilized in order for us to analyze it and work with it as analysts or again, data engineers in general. So I think there's kind of this gap that you'll have as you're going from college to work that really hasn't been met fully without some sort of like extension certificate program, whether that's in college or online, that can kind of fill in a lot of those gaps. And even then, again, by the time you realize what data engineering is, you might already be well into your career and not fully develop the skills that you need. And so it's a little difficult. Now, let's say you've been scrolling medium and you've happened to come across the term data engineering, and now you're really interested. You know, you've read about the topic, you like the skills, you like the tools that you gotta work with, you like the problems that you're gonna solve. And so now you want to dive into data engineering, but you run into the next problem, which there aren't a ton of junior data engineer positions out there. Especially when I was kind of first coming up, you know, data engineers kind of were just data engineers. There was no real first level, you know, out of college entry level data engineering position. There was either data engineering internships that were usually limited to companies like Amazon or Facebook or data engineering positions that required three to five years of experience and, you know, a good depth of knowledge in terms of like data warehousing and ETLs. And so this kind of, again, makes it very difficult to break into a position with data engineering when there really isn't a direct from college to a three to five year experience job that's easy for everyone to attain. And so unless you get a job at Facebook in terms of getting an internship and then eventually getting a return offer, you're not likely to find a ton of junior data engineering positions out there. Now I am seeing, I think a little more of this come up as people are realizing they need to fill this gap, not just in terms of hiring more data engineers in general, but also teaching up the new kind of generation of data engineers and helping them understand the various skill sets they need while also providing opportunities for people, again, out of college to really start getting an understanding of what data engineering is and how they can develop their maybe software skills or database skills towards these positions in general. So I think that's, again, another kind of gap that's slowly being met, but it's kind of slow at the current moment as companies are just starting to push more into the need for data engineers 
just to manage and process all of their data properly. Another hurdle you might face when you're trying to figure out if data engineering is for you is developing data engineering projects on your own that you can either show to recruiters or something similar that really match what you're going to be doing in real life just because you're not often dealing with systems that have as much data or require as many workarounds in terms of how to manage, again, large amounts of data, wacky data, whatever it might be, data that's just semi-structured, unstructured, and just deal with all the various challenges that you're gonna deal with in your actual career. In terms of replicating those same challenges so you can fully discuss how you would solve various problems that data engineers deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as running into the challenge of having a hard time really displaying your work in terms of data engineering projects. Data engineering projects don't exactly lend themselves as easily to being utilized for uh, front-end applications that are easy to then display to some form of final user. Instead, unlike software projects where you can pretty easily develop some form of final product that you can then display and discuss through easily, Oftentimes data engineering projects can feel like you're mostly stuck to the back end in terms of just developing a lot of infrastructure. Now, this isn't to say that you're limited to that. Um, I actually have a great video that you can watch here that talks about five data engineering projects that did a great job displaying the work that they did and showing kind of the various problems that they were solving and different tools that they used in such a way that personally, I thought really did stand out and is worth noting in terms of people that are looking for data engineering project ideas. Finally, one of the issues I think I've noticed with a lot of people trying to break into data engineering in general is they often come with it more from an ad hoc perspective in terms of the fact that they come at it from people maybe more of an analyst or data science perspective where their workflows and their data flows are often scraped from data sources and there isn't really this treatment of the data as your final product but instead you kind of do this analysis as the final product and you're missing the point in terms of what data engineers do which is we tend to focus more on trying to build data infrastructure that can be utilized in the future versus trying to just build analysis. And I think this is kind of one of those gaps that just is hard to understand until you're actually working as a data engineer and understanding that you know your final product really is the data and it's less about the products that you build with that data. All that being said, those were a lot of problems and now I wanna provide some clear solutions or at least some things that I've seen work in terms of how people have gone from you know maybe zero to data engineer one way or the other. And the first one that I wanted to cover was one thing that I did, which was going from an analyst to a data engineer. I think this is actually pretty common because a lot of analysts might be a little more technical, right? Like you might already like programming as it is, and you might want to start building data pipelines because that's just what you're interested in. You might have the opportunity to do it because either the data engineers themselves are really busy. Maybe you work for a small company, whatever it might be. All of this could lead to you having the opportunity to build data pipelines for yourself, which you can then kind of expand into your skill set. You can, you know, add that onto your resume, and then it's easier to move into your next role, either at the company or in your next role that you're trying to interview for, because you've got all of these experiences and projects that you can just easily show that you've actually done in real life and talk through a lot of the problems that you've solved. So that's why I think it's very common for people to go from analyst to some form of data engineering position, because it's just an easy kind of move if you really enjoy the programming and uh, data pipeline side of that kind of work. I think the next lateral move that some people make is going from software engineer to more of a software engineer focusing on data. And so these people tend to be people who already like data in general and maybe want to go more towards just purely focusing on the data side of software. So building like data infrastructure, uh, building a lot of streaming pipelines or building just systems that integrate really well from like a data engineering aspect versus just a pure software aspect. I do think these people tend to enjoy data itself versus software engineering purely. So this is, I think, a different kind of jump. Oftentimes you're just focused more on building data platforms than purely just data pipelines, which might be the first move someone goes for in terms of going from analyst to data engineer. Usually this is because these are more code heavy roles. And so this is a slight, I think, difference. And this is where I often describe sometimes the fact that some data engineers are more like software engineers and some data engineers are almost more like analysts that understand doing like data pipelining work. And so there's a kind of an interesting bifurcation there in terms of roles and what those types of data engineers do. Next, another opportunity you might have, especially if you've got at least a more general technical background is working as a data engineer at some form of startup. Oftentimes you will need to do a lot of different roles if you're working in a startup. So if you have the opportunity to work in some sort of startup, trying to push into data engineering at a startup might be a little easier because they're often looking for anyone that can solve a lot of problems versus one person that's very good at solving like specific problems. So if you enjoy data engineering and you can get into a startup that you know will have a lot of data engineering problems, it's likely that you can eventually push into doing data engineering work one way or the other, whether that's going from analyst to data engineer or from software engineer to data engineer. 
If that's something you like, that's usually another great option. Arguably the best option from all of these is to go from intern to data engineer. So get a data engineering internship at a large fan company or some other company that has data engineering internships, and then just try to get a return offer. That's probably the easiest way to break into this. But most people, if you're looking this up, you're probably either unsure of how to break into it because you've been looking for a while for roles, or maybe, you know, you've already missed the window in terms of being an intern. You know, that was kind of the place that I was at where I had missed the window of being an intern. So I had to go the analyst to data engineer route, but it really just depends on kind of where you are in your overall journey in terms of trying to go from nothing to data engineer. So hopefully this was a helpful video for people out there who are looking to become a data engineer, regardless of your experience level, if you've got some acum to data in general, and you like data engineering, I would recommend not getting discouraged when you don't get a data engineering position right away. And instead continually try to figure out different ways you can push into the field because there's a lot of opportunities out there. I think data engineering in general is in an interesting space right now where there's a lot of change happening. There's a lot of low code solutions happening. There's still a lot of like coding options out there as well. And I think we're trying to figure out what data engineering is going to look like in the next five to 10 years as more data is just flowing into various systems as well as into data warehouses, which is pushing companies to try to figure out exactly how to manage their data effectively so they can answer their questions quickly without getting bogged down by slow data warehouses and duplicate data and just other general issues you'll run into while you're trying to manage large data systems. With that, I just want to say thanks so much for watching this video and good luck breaking into data engineering. Bye.